I had a patient, she had uh, Parkinson's for 18 years, and she was falling a lot in the evening. And what was happening in the evening is that um, they had her medication time, so e evening was kind of more of her off time. And so she had to get up, and uh, in Hawaii, we, um, if you have to go to the bathroom, uh, it's called shishi. It's a, she had to go shishi in the middle of the night. And, uh, um, and that's when she was having trouble and, and falling. And so we worked on the four-point gate and things. And what she did, and she came up with this on her own, and it worked great for her, is um, she would get out of bed, and she would grab her imaginary poles, and she used the four-point gate with imaginary poles to the bathroom and back, and she quit falling. I mean, she was falling literally five, six times a week, and she really went to falling maybe once a month uh, after doing that. And, and again, it was because the purposeful movement, uh, um, you know, uh, she, was, she wasn't relying on that automatic pilot. So the four-point gate can be applied even without, without the canes. Or if you have a, a two regular standard canes, you can use those. You don't have to have poles. Uh, you know, you can use two standard canes. It's, it's more of the mechanism of, uh, you know, the, that, that strategy. Uh, so. It depends. Uh, some people go out and actually buy the poles, you know. Uh, um, but yeah, so sometimes it's just training, and, and, and sometimes people will use it, you know, long term. Uh, um, probably more often, more training. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I will have. We'll talk about equipment. I do have people that, that will purchase those. So. Okay, the British soldier. This this strategy is really simple, but it, it, it works. And uh, what happens with this, when people start walking, and and and, and you you lose heel strike, so you're you're uh, you're shuffling your feet. Um, when you catch yourself doing that, what I have people do is over-exaggerate the gait just for a couple of strides to kind of get you out of it. So what happens, is, and you want to catch early, so if you start shuffling, you know, again, you're, you're, you're not moving purposefully if you're doing that. And so uh, I, I try to train people to catch themselves to switch to purposeful or teach their, their spouse to, to remind them. And, and, um, and so if you're shuffling a little bit, then, then what I have, and you recognize it, you can either stop and restart, like we talked about, like the hula, or if you want to keep on going and you have control, is what I have people do is over-exaggerate, you know, over-exaggerate gate for a few steps. And what that does is it puts your center of gravity back over your base support, you're taking big steps, and you're moving purposefully again. And then you can kind of settle down back to a more normal gait. So that's, that's one strategy if you uh, don't want to kind of uh, start, stop, and restart. This is a strategy if you have control to, uh, to keep on going, and, and uh, it can be effective. Okay, now this one is the most ultra simple one, but it, 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 it's dynamite. I, um, this is simply, um, this works well. I, I usually use this one for people who really have lots of dyskinesia. Because if you have lots of dyskinesia, and, 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 and these are the folks I work with who have been on cinnamon forever, and, um, and they just have a lot of, lot of writhing movement, they will have a hard time with, with the poles. They may have a hard time with some of the other strategies. Um, and a lot of times, again, they'll be, they'll be leading, they'll have more of an erratic gait because they, they'll have a little bit of the freezing, but they have the dyskinesia. And, um, and again, they'll lead their gait with their head and shoulders, you know, and you get this kind of, kind of, stuttering type of, type of gait. And I just teach them to uh, get your, stop and get your heel down first. Get your heel down first. Get your heel down first. And, and uh, this gentleman, I'm thinking the image I have in my head, his name's Marsalis, he, he'll just purposely just get a really purpose heel strike. And that helps control his gait tremendously. Now it's really simple, but if you think about it, I'm go up here so you can see me. Um, if you get your heel down first, your center of gravity is going to be over your base of support. There's no way it can be. I mean, the, you know, it would, you'd have to like contort yourself, you know, to get it in front of you. So it's just a very simple strategy to keep your center of gravity over your base of support. And, and, and like I've been harping on, posture, posture, posture. If your center of gravity is over your base of support, you're not going to be less likely you're going to go into that, that fascination gate. So this is a wonderful uh, tip to you know, try to do that. So if, you, if you're catching yourself shuffling, just try to get into a heel strike for a few steps and, and see if you can keep it for, uh, as you get going. Okay, um, 
We're going to talk about assistive devices. Now, assistive devices are like canes, walkers, crutches, those types of things. For Parkinson's, they're, they're used differently than traditionally what they're meant for. Um, traditionally, you know, assistive devices were used to offload a hurt limb. So like an orthopedic situation where you had knee surgery, your surgeon doesn't want you to uh, weight bear on that knee, then you're going to maybe use a cane or a crutch to, to not weight bear. But Parkinson's weight bearing is not an issue, and, and so it's used more for balance. And um, so because of that, um, you're going to use them in, in a different way. You're going to, uh, and I'm going to kind of show you. Uh, let me go back up here. Uh, I have a tendency to raise the assisted devices for all my Parkinson's patients way high, as high as I can get them. Um, so if the walker, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put the walker in the highest thing so it's way up here. Now, if you're an orthopedic patient, it, it doesn't work really well, it, you know, if you, if you have to offload a limb because you don't have good leverage. But if you're a Parkinson's patient, again, you're not using that for, to offload, you're using it for balance. The higher walker has a tendency to... Um, Keep, again, keep you more upright and give you a better posture. So I do that. I have a tendency to put the canes higher, um, the walkers higher, and that sort of thing. I am not a walker fan. And, and there is a place for walkers, but I really, I hate walkers because they actually kind of feed into what Parkinson's wants to do. You know, there's a tendency to come forward, center of gravity over your base, in front of your base of support, and get in this type of posture. Now, you can walk tall, but it's harder you know, within your walker, but the walkers have a tendency to kind of feed into the Parkinson's. So there's a place for them, and I do use them, but I try to use them far down the line as I can because they don't, um, they don't mimic a natural gait. They don't help me out with all your other mobility type of issues. And so, uh, you know, when I have to, I will definitely, I, you know, eventually I will recommend a walker, but I, I try not to use them. Uh, this is an example of a quad cane. Um, it has four prongs. Never use them for Parkinson's at all. They're just they're they're a hassle. So uh, we'll use single point canes. There are some specialty devices that were made just for Parkinson's, um, and this one is a um, called a U-step uh, walker, and uh, it's pretty fancy. It has uh, what they call reverse brakes, so it has a braking system that won't allow you to, won't allow the walker to get away from you. So if you have a tendency for the fascinating gait, it, it, it actually puts the brakes on you. It won't allow you to take off. Um, it also has a laser that shoots across and gives you a guide to step uh, towards. And, uh, and it has that kind of the U shape. Uh, um, so somebody with Parkinson's would help to design this walker. Um, does anybody have one? Okay. Do you like it? Love it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I got mixed feelings about it because uh, for me, it hasn't, it's not, first of all, it's heavy and, and it's not really practical in, in uh, you know, if you go into a lot, you know, a lot of community and, and the bumps and I don't know. Um, but yeah, but, it, but it's out there. And, and, and the, the other drawback, it's very expensive and very, very expensive. Um, it, it works well if you have a lot of tile and things like that too, I think, but... Now this is a cane that I showed you earlier. This is another uh, device that was, um, um, it's called the Next Step, and a, Parkin a person with Parkinson's uh, designed this. And I haven't ordered one of these yet. I haven't had the guts to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand the concept, and, it, it, and it, it makes sense with the literature, and it makes sense, but I don't know. I just haven't had the guts to make an obstacle. Um, so what it does is when you put the cane down, a lever comes down and you have to, it forces you to step over it. But um, if you get on their website, it's called Next Step. There's tons of testimonials that swear by it. So I just, I just haven't had the guts to, uh, to, to um, actually give one to somebody. But uh, does anybody have one of these that can give a personal testimony? No? Okay. So there's some stuff out there to, uh, that, again, designed just for Parkinson's.